showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that we're in. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. Nice knot. <laughs> this series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. Getting a little bit of the pre-game jitters already. Some boats have left the dock and probably already have lines in. And we're sitting here, but we told everyone 6.15 and this is the time that I want to start because the tides, well, coming across the bridge this morning, the tide's not doing what I expected them to do. So my entire plan that I had set up yesterday, I've already scrapped it and kind of starting over from scratch at this point. But that's part of the fun. As soon as you think you got it figured out, you don't. When those boys get here, we're gonna be rocked and ready, baited up, weighted up, and ready to go get in on some buoy 10 salmon. Man, don't be bringing kill bags. <laughs> That's my lunch. Okay, all right. <laughs> Take your weapons. Now we got the water temp. We'll just start here for now. I guess we got to get lines in the water eventually for the first day of buoy 10. I know we're buddy fishing today, but every boat has their own system. So uh, I'm going to treat you guys like clients today. <laughs> you can see how all the rods are stored up in the nice little fish fighter storage trays. Rods are clipped in. They just push in and out just like that, nice and easy. You don't need to remove the rubber band. Leads go in the cup, lure goes in the little tray. When you get your gear in the water, always put the hooks in the water first. That way they're clear of everyone and everything. Then your flasher, if you drop the lead first, you're gonna have a bad day. Hooks will end up in your hand. Okay, so from there, you're gonna reel all the way up to the rod tip and zero out. That's our zero point. Make sure your line counters are at triple zero. I am very particular about depth because so, when I see the fish on the graph here, I wanna make sure their gear's in front of their face. So every single time when you let out, reel up, zero out. Before you push back on this lever, make sure your thumb's on the spool, otherwise, bad stuff happens. Up to the rod tip, zero it out, thumb on the spool, and then use your other hand, go down nice and slow and easy. And we always start with the back rods first, then the middle, then the bow. I'll give you guys each number, but let's get baited up here first, and then we'll get hunting.
All right, let's get them hunting. So back rods first, hooks in the water. So we're gonna go 55, 45, 35. Just wait for the rod in front of you to go. Hyvin, you can go ahead. Looks good, cool. That's a weird tide. Need that first bite, man. Looking good, looking good. I got fishermen today, I like it. Yep. I think two days, it's way early in the season for Tongue Point, but if there are fish up there, it'd be like tomorrow or the next day. Should be the money. I think, uh, just, all right. Maverick Supersonic, I'll be there. Later. Wow. I was wrong. You know, we really need to find the best water temperature and here's why, and I'm a real professional and I know what I'm talking about. Nope. They're up at the bridge, boys. Right where we were planning on starting. Fun, let's go get them. Yeah. Gotta chase that water temperature, it's the only way to do it. And he gets a phone call. Go 45, 35, 25 again. Back rods first in the middle, then the bow. Get them hunting and then we'll see what the graph says. Reel them up, zero them out. Get them hunting. Uh, there's grass up here. We just made a move and got back up here, got our lines back in the water and there is an absolute pile of boats up on the shallow ledge over on Desdemona Sands. And we are not fishing anywhere near them. And the reason why is because the best fish finder out here are other fishermen. So when I pulled up, the first thing I did is I looked over there and I didn't see a single net up. There's Maybe there was a bite there a little bit earlier and that's why they're all kegged up in that spot. But the fact that there are no nets flying in that area means there's no reason for us to be there. But the second that we start seeing two, three, four nets pop up, drive over there real quick, get on top of the fish that they've found for us. For now, we're gonna try and find our own. Give them strips. Maybe. Eric, when you let that out, just point the rod tip towards the side of the boat so it stays away from Steve. And you'll, you'll be all right, Steve. You should be good. Anybody want that one? Somebody grab it. Go ahead, I've been having fun. A boat full of guys catching fish, no one wants to grab it. <laughs> Eric, can you bring yours in for me? Look, weird, we're losing fish on 360s, no way. I hate these things, but they get bit. That was a heck of a fish, man. Good size, and there was a keeper. Oh, look at that. Bent the hook out. Hyben, were you thumbing it? <laughs> oh, got a couple fish on in front of us sideways. Uh, boats are sideways, Julie, telltale sign the fish are on. We just lost two, one really nice keeper at the boat um, on a spinner, and uh, Cody's finishing down in the presentation. I'm running the boat. Jason's netting fish. Hyben's losing the fish. Eric's waiting for a fish. So we got some stuff going on. This is going to be fun. Table, double. <laughs> Hyben lost it. I lost it. Yeah, get it, son. Get it. Oh, no, you stinking seal. Seal got you? Nope. Oh, he got you now. Oh, got to do him up. We got a seal problem. Yeah, you run, little fucker. Down. We out? Yep. Nice. Got a seal. Coming down, boys. Coming down. Coming up. Coming up. He's going to jump. He's going to jump. You rotten burger. Let's go. Let's go. Watch it. <laughs> go. 
we won! <laughs> but lost at the same time. Regulations are a wild fish got to go back, so we're going to unhook him and feed it back to the seal. Watch your fingers. I'm still going to steal a fish. Uh, that's just part of the deal of fishing down here in Astoria are these harbor seals, and they're getting, today's August 1st, so today's their first day of remembering that as soon as they see a net, it's time to feed. And the regulations are we got to let all wild fish go, so even though the fish is dead after being munched on by a harbor seal and being fought, back he went. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action, or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. Get them hunting boys back rods first. Uh, let's start them out. Let's just get them in the water first at uh, 40, 30, 20, and then we'll figure it out from there. It's been an interesting and fun morning so far. Uh, let's start off by saying we have absolutely nothing in the box, nothing. But we've had a double, which we lost one and the other one ended up in the mouth of a seal. We had a really nice hatchery schnook right outside the boat that came off. We have had a couple of jacks and missed a few bites. So for the opener August 1st, that's actually really, really good. But we were getting that action on the last part of the incoming tide. Now the tide is starting to flip and we're right at that stage where the current isn't going up or down. And what's tough about this on these small tides is the fish will scatter. They're essentially in, in a fishbowl. They're just, when there's no current, there's nothing to shove them into a corner or put them up against the sandbar over here or out here in the channel, they just spread out. So because of that, we're spreading our gear out too throughout the water column, trying to figure out if they're coming up off the bottom or if that outgoing tide is starting to suck them back down on the deck. So right now we're back in search mode again. We finally found them, just found them a little bit too late because now the tide's already switching. So we got to start all over, start fresh. It's almost like the fish are just not moving at all. They're staying right here at the bottom of this sunken island because when we were getting our bites, we were going up, it was right there. And now the tide's flipped. I've seen three or four fish get caught right there. Crazy Ivan bite, crazy Ivan bite. The week 10's awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna fight the fish? I don't know how to fight salmon. I just run boats, man. Jeez. Okay, I gotta catch one. Do I get to net my own fish too? <laughs> I think I made him mad. That's acting like a seal, dang it. Seal. Real man, boys. Freaking seals, man. Watch out for that line. Oh, I hate harbor seals. Gosh, man. Oh, I'm already annoyed with harbor seals and it's only the first day. Keep taking me back that way. We're gaining, we're gaining. Uh, Eric, you wanna grab a net? I wonder if he dumped it. Fish. Ooh, maybe it wasn't a seal. <laughs> it was just a big fish. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. I thought it was a seal. That's no. <laughs> just a mid 20 pound fish. Look at that bruiser, bro. Yeah. We're backing down on it. Ah, <laughs> oh, stinking seals, man. No, I just haven't seen a fish that big in a long time. <laughs> this is how we kick off buoy 10. What are you doing? Give me that thing. That's my fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude. Here, we'll get up in the bow. I caught one. 
This is gonna be my first and only buoy tent salmon. And it's a tank. <laughs> oh man, we thought it was a seal. <laughs> Dude, this is how we kick off buoy tent. Just like that. Over, under, over, under. We're under. This bird, boys. There's a lot of fish in the craft here all of a sudden. We all out? I'm just going to get them all out. We're going to land this fish. Nice fish. Man, these fish are fighting hard. Scoop score. Nice work. Hatchery fish, too, bro. Let's undo our mess and get it back in the water here. There are fish on the graph. 36, 28, 20. This back rod hammered down. Eric did an awesome job landing it. And it's laying right there on the deck. And it's beautiful. Like here, it's just when you mark them, when you find them, generally they'll bite. Right? Like if you're marking them, and we, we started marking them, as soon as we started marking them, rods started going down. And um, you know, we just kind of figured out a little deal right here, making a couple small circles, which is not normal for here either. But uh, if it's working, go for it. 42, 36, 30. Change up our depth a little bit. Marking more fish down on the deck. Tide's starting to run out, so we're gonna suck our gear down to them. Many lines in front of their face if we can. Seriously, somebody should get clobbered. Their their gear's was, right through the middle of them. That was very rude. Salmon are jerks. The water temp's starting to creep back up on me again, but again, the, the fish are here, so it might just be a tide deal. We might just need to wait for the tide change. The issue is that. The tide series that we have here today, we had the biggest tide, the most amount of water moving first thing this morning. And now from here on out, it's only like a two and a half, three foot exchange. I mean, there's a fish right there at 18 feet. He, they're down there, they're just not biting. So we're gonna see if we can't go find some that want to give us a little bit of action here. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. Jason Derulo. Don't feel real big, but... Uh, Here you go, Jason. We've had a pretty good day here so far, and it's only just now 11 o'clock. We got three really nice kings in the box, and Lost a couple, let it one go, had the seal incident. It's been a very productive morning. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about our spread that we're running here. I wanted to start out with a little bit of everything. And typically on these softer tides, the 360 flashers with spinners or spin fish tend to do a little bit better. But I just can't go away from my triangles and anchovy spinner rigs, a little rogue, rogue style bait rig, just cause that's what I've run for years down here. And it just flat out works all the time. On the flashers over here on the triangle side with the bait, I run only three colors ever. Red October, Pawn Shop, Green Machine. Those three colors will work in every single instance in water clarity and light clarity that you will ever experience down here. All you need is green, red, and chrome. Behind those we have anchovies, but they each have spinner blades in front of them. 
and it seems like the orange one first thing this morning was really getting bit. That one's gone a little bit quiet, probably because the light is starting to penetrate down a little bit deeper. And now the greens are starting to get bit a little bit more. On the 360 side, we're running chrome flashers for the uh, 360 flashers. And then in behind them, the spinners that we're running. Uh, let's see, the light bulb has got a couple bites. Uh, Bronco had a bite and Mexican hat has only had one grab actually. So far, a majority of our bites, I'd probably say about 80% of our bites have been on bait, which surprises me because again, these softer tides, the 360 game tends to do a bit better. Not the case today. These fish want bait, so that's really good to see. Cody is so dialed in. I look in back there right now and I see a focused individual, like laser focused. You watch. <laughs> There's a good one. Almost had a double. Oh, there you go. There you go. found ourselves in a nursery here. We just missed one over here, which was probably a jack. Steve over here has landed two jacks in a row. Hopefully that means that in years to come, we're gonna have a lot more stronger Chinook runs here coming into the Columbia River, because that is a lot of jacks to be around here in this estuary. That's another jack. This is another jack. <laughs> Hot bite, bro. <laughs> hey, if you add up all the jacks together, it might equal three pounds. So real quick, we're gonna run down Rod Rio line. Uh, man, what an epic day out here. But uh, anything in that nine and a half to 10 and a half foot range, 10 to 30, 15 to 40, uh, will work well for you. Uh, Reel definitely want a line counter. Lots of good models of line counters out there. Important part to zero it when you bring it up so you're always in the same spot. Another good feature is a power handle. Makes it easier to reel. This is Maxima Braid 8, 65 pound high viz. This is our main line terminal gear coming down to a nice little bumper bead here to keep my weight slider from slamming into our first eyelet. Couple down to, this is a VIP line lock. Helps whenever this swivel locks in there when you're trolling so you don't get the line twist, especially when fishing the 360 flashers. 16 ounce leads. We've got a bumper. This can be anything from mono to titanium to wire, whatever you feel. This happens to be a titanium one. Eight inch Yakima bait fish flash. This is Cody's money uh, color called the Red October. About four foot a liter. Okay, this can be anything from a 25 to a 40 pound, depending on the style of bait you're fishing. Okay, down to an anchovy hood, some grass, because I just pulled in, <laughs> and a Hildebrandt blade. We've been uh, soaking these from anything from anchovy oil to garlic that Steve has on up front, and uh, you know, pretty much had success all the way through. So get yourself some of this. On Chinook, everything from 24 inches and under is a jack, and you can't keep a jack below tongue point. So we had to measure it to make sure. That's a good one. It's chaos! We have fish on the deck to fish on. <laughs> you gotta love this kind of fishing. We're trying to measure a fish, figure out a fish, hook a fish, catch a fish, land a fish, release a fish, kill a fish, put a fish in the box. That's fishing. That's how you net a salmon. No, be short. Okay. This is chaotic for August 1st. This is really good fishing. Really good fishing. Can't even control the boat right now. We're going every which way, but rods are folding over. So this is freaking awesome. I love it. Woo! Oh boy. Little fish are making a mess of the gear. Just don't throttle up. 
cut off on the motor. Did you cut my line? I did. I bit it. <laughs> he ain't catching no fish on my watch. We now have five fish in the box, and it's this is without a doubt the best buoy tent opener I've ever experienced. And we're just, I'm really glad that I have a good crew here today because there's no way I could have been this successful here today without having all these guys that know how to fish in the boat because it's been run and gun, throwing baits on, nets being handed around, rods going over and under, doing a little salmon dance, and it's been a blast. Wish that we'd had a few more adults, a lot of jacks out here, but frankly, that's just a good sign for hopefully next year. This is awesome. I hope that this means that this season is going to go really, really well. I know that this is a good tide right now for having a lot of fish around, but hopefully it means that the entire season is just like this for the next four or five weeks. You can do it, Hyper. Is this still on there? Nice work today, boys. Get it in, baked garlic. They wouldn't eat. I got 99 problems catching fish A1.